code. Now, what is Docs code? What all do we need to implement it? And why should we implement it? We already have so many tools, so many processes. Why should we implement it? We will try to see all that in this small session. But before that, I would just like to ask you guys. You can unmute yourself and just answer some questions very quickly without getting into the details. So before introducing that, what is Docs as code? How it is done? First, let us understand what is the current situation. So it's open to audience. What is your doc story? What is your doc story means? How do you prepare documentation right now using what tools, uh, which tools, processes, and how do you feel about it? So we have few questions. So can people answer which doc tools do you use for writing content? Hi, this is Richa. Yep. Yeah, so uh, uh, I am overall having 8.5 years of experience. And throughout my experience, I worked on RoboHelp for creating content. Okay, that's an Adobe tool uh, as per the user requirements and the customer requirement. And I also worked on FrameMaker. Okay. Uh, apart from that, I have I have also worked on Microsoft Word for creating various contents as awesome. per the customer and the user requirement. Yeah. Awesome. So we have three and, names: uh, uh, RoboHelp, FrameMaker, and Word. You want to add something more? Yeah, and for images, I have been using since like 8.5 years, I have been using Snagit. Wonderful. Apart from these four names, anybody else has anything else to add? Hi, Puneet. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> we are using Matcap yes. Player. Matcap Player. player. That's, okay. number five. That's number four. And one image. Data. 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 When, hold on, hold on, Ash. When we say DTARD, for DTA, which tool? Oxygen. It's Arbotex Editor. Yeah, Oxygen, Oxygen. Arbotex Editor. Okay. Any more so additions? I use, uh, yeah, I I use Adlibs Conference. Okay, great. Uh, Puneet, uh, this Dripi here. So we have been using Fresh Desk for authoring. Uh, also, Help and Doc for online experts. Wonderful. Okay, thank you so much to all of you. Now the second question is using whichever tools you are using. Did you manage the doc website or you just provide the doc output output? You know this, whether it can be single source or whatever PDF HTML. Do you just provide the output or do you manage the doc site also? Probably the easier way out will be is here anybody who is managing the doc website. We all know everybody provides doc output. Anybody here managing doc website? No. OK, so this is I mean second part is sorry. Clear. So, sorry to uh, there. There's some answers on the chat uh, Puneet. I can't see. Can you tell? Yeah, that's what I'm telling you. So I <laughs> says that only output Ravi Chandran says that. Uh, uh, yeah, manage the doc website. He does. Yes. Any more answers for this? Do you all only have uh, contribution in uh, the docs as output or do you all any of you manage the doc website as well? <clears throat> OK, when we, we, say, go ahead. we can go yeah. ahead. OK, now third point, the most painful point. Basically, everybody keeps on mentioning that how to interact with SME, how to get their sympathy, empathy and whatever. So how do you get SME input or review? Do you use a tool or is it generally email or is it in person? You can just name tool, email or in person. Email. Google Docs. Email. And email. OK, we have tool, we have, we have tool. email. And also interaction. OK. So we have three ways. Is there any uh, incident? Uh, Jira. I mean, Jira. So any uh, anybody here who can mention that SMEs are proactively contributing towards all this, or is it always that you have to go behind them? Anybody has such nice incident to tell? Yeah, they usually give half information. The other half we have to follow. Right. OK, in my case, we have a huge product, so some of them they give. Uh, and for some we have to follow. OK, great. 
Thank you. Now we move, move to the last part of this question. Whatever doc tool you are using and overall the doc processes, overall doc tool or the process which you are using, which cost something to provide the complete doc delivery. So what is the cost to the company? I am not asking in terms of numbers. Do you think it's too high or do you think it's less? <coughs> in case you are aware about the costs. In my case, I think it is OK, reasonable because many of us are uh, using it. So Great. we have around uh, we have a big team of uh, awesome. documentation, which is spread less. So I think it is awesome. it is, near, uh, it is economical. OK, anybody else with less cost? Because generally doc tools, when we talk to all the people mention about doc tools, those doc tools do cost. If not a lot, but at least they, caught, uh, they cost. Yeah, the activation conference cost, cost is very less. <coughs> the, okay. the, uh, so we use uh, fresh test. So the fresh test is meant for support team. So the cost is less as well as documentation is concerned because we anyways have to have this okay. tool for the support team. OK, OK, great. Cool, so this is overall the answers I wanted. Thank you so much for your help. Now let's get into what is docs as code. Why I wanted those answers, I will come back to those references uh, or to the reference and probably through what when we talk about docs as code, you will be able to uh, figure out. So docs as code, number one, it's not a tool. Primarily, it's a overall documentation process that also involves multiple tools. It's not just about one tool and it covers from writing to delivering to the customer and in that it includes the whole documentation process. The best part about docs as code as you can figure it out from the name is docs as code. The full form is documentation as code. So you are writing documentation only. You're not doing anything else, but why is it as code? So it is as code because you use tools which are very close to the development team also. And you follow the same model that development team follow to build their code. This is where like one mention came about Git, so such people will be able to uh, relate better if you are using Git. So you write documentation, but you follow the development model and uh, or over a uh, multiple steps, then you deliver the content. It can be as simple as that as a definition. If we want to go to the complex definition, then the complex definition of docs as a code will be that you are writing not just about topics. You are closely knit with every every project feature, the software, ar software architecture, the whole project process mm -hmm. where you see so many development tasks. You need to understand those. You need to study those <clears throat> and then Overall collaboration is so closely knit that development cannot push their features to production if it has a doc task attached. Unlike a situation where at times documentation is prepared later or people are not much bothered about documentation and they still go ahead with the production. So this close knit collaboration docs as a code is following. We will come to the benefits in detail. Overall, you can understand that docs as a code is a process where multiple tools are involved, but it's not a tool. Docs as code is not a tool. The general pro workflow is first, the content is created. Here, the writers are involved. Writers can create content using some kind of markdown editor, which is very easy to use and uh, most importantly, sorry to interrupt, Steve. Uh, are you sharing the screen? Uh, are you seeing the docs as code workflow screen? No, I can't see anything. That's fine. No, yes, I can see only the title for the screen. Documentation methods, doc as code. Okay, I'll have to check this again. Thanks for telling. Now, can you see? 
when the screen is moving yes no uh, no i think you are going into the presentation it's not coming okay i don't know okay now is it visible if i don't go into the presentation yeah. mode yeah this is yeah. what is docs as code okay so yeah. now so docs as code workflow primarily it's just simple plain four steps first we create content then we manage the created content once the content is final then we compile the content and after that we mix it with our digital content and then build when we say build then everything is pushed to the documentation website where customers can access and what all we do we need and who are the key players when we create content it's us the writers the whole documentation team we can use a simple markdown editor markdown editors there are multiple markdown editors in the market and most of them are free to use so there is no cost to the company first in our case which we will demo we used visual source code then once you have written it and from your end it's final you move it for, to collaborate for reviews there you manage content there only once the reviews are done and your content is final your doc admin who will have all the uh, people in the documentation team will not have access to push it to production so your doc admin can compile the final content for managing content the repository that we use is github then once you want to compile it all the set of the project whatever documentation uh, you have multiple guides different topics remember till here we are talking about content content is the text that you are writing we are not talking about images and videos here which you might be using on your doc website or in your documentation so now the content is final reviewed and it's ready to be published so but before final publishing uh, we can compile it now while compiling if you have screenshots and if you have videos there is a different place where you can keep the screenshots and the videos what you need to do you need to only add the links to your content part that is all you do you don't need to insert anything physically there like we do in general documentation tools so in compile part the content and the digital content is mixed the site for that there are multiple static site generators we used hugo and then you have your server that server can be multiple we used aws s3 and you publish it this is the four step docs as a code workflow to get into details when you write in short codes markdown editor some names you can see you can pick your own there are many more in the market i have just uh, mentioned here one uh, some of the most popular and second to manage content then for version control and for reviews which is collaboration collaborate closely with the smes and within your team also you will need peer reviews and all you can use github directly there you can assign reviewers they will provide comments and then it's on you how much to accept how much not to accept but the best part about that is there will be a history where you can track even after 6 months that on a particular topic who commented what if you made a change even if that change is as minor as change in what you removed a comma and placed a period in uh, for that entire history is there second benefit of this review part is the thing that i was talking about direct collaboration with the developers those who know git where uh, github will know that there are you know repository there is branch there are branches where people can access whomsoever you provide access for details i would say if you don't know then learn github but in general i am telling you that once your topic is pushed there you can provide access to anybody in the organization who can come review the come uh, review it right there and it works very efficiently with the developers because they are very much used to using github most of their codes are also there so this sync works very properly and as a result 
it helps us collaborate more efficiently with the developers and that is where i feel one of the most important role docs has code play is it makes us a team partner we don't remain isolated in the eyes of project team dev team also they know what we are doing how we are adding value this is one thing that's often missed in general project management and this is where often some tech writers complain that people don't value our work and we have to do you know a lot of chasing and all so this is something i feel and we have implemented it and i feel we have uh, it helps a lot then after managing comp uh, comp content you need to compile it to compile it and to give website uh, every website has a look and feel tocs body parts you know <clears throat> top bar footer so that template the theme so for that you need a static site generator static site generator there are many in the market these three are right now the most famous ones jekyll hugo sphinx in our case we used hugo and when you want to so you have the first three you have markdown editor you have github you have static site all these three are linked then you need to build site now to build site as you all know you need a server this server can come from anywhere it can be your own company server and it can be anyway gitlab github if you explore that then you will find many options we are using aws s uh, aws s3 and the benefit here i'm talking about like even in markdown editor no cost involved in github no cost involved in hugo no cost involved it's just the server part okay where we have to pay and when we are using aws s3 it's coming damn cheap it's coming actually more cheaper than the way when we maintain our blog site so this is where i am i my first question uh, set had this question about cost to company so it gives us full freedom and it provides us less cost also so this is where now when we talk about benefits of docs as code we can talk we can say that work with project teams and get desired attention and respect and proper collaboration with SMEs. This is one thing which most of us always tell. Trust me, when you work the same way they are working, you are writing. Nobody is asking you to change the way you are writing, but you're following a process that is very much in sync with them. We get desired attention. Everybody then knows that documentation is also as important as product features. So as a result, you have the power at times to stop pushing off a feature if the documentation is not complete. SMEs very proactively they act. Yes, you will always find people who will create problem, but then more or less it's the environment is much better. You have the power to design your own doc site. You means your team. Doc team has the power to design their own website using the static site generator and lesser cost to company. Now, in all this process, what could, what are the learning curves? Since doc as code could be many uh, docs as code could be new for many many people. So, what are the learning curves here? Primarily, th three things we use: Markdown editor. Let's count it as a tool. GitHub as a tool. A static site generator as a tool. In Markdown Editor, people must be aware about HTML tags and other things. In the same way, Markdown Editor is basically based on some short codes. Like some short codes you are seeing, you just use, you, instead of like in, if you are aware about HTML and all, you use H1, you use B with some tags for different kind of formatting. Here you use just one hash. If you want heading level one, you use one hash. If you want two, heading level two, you use two hash in front of words. So it is as simple as that. Yes, there will be some learning, but it is as simple as that. And we have this link here, learn more. You can, if you are interested in learning those hash, then you can just click this link and access it. Trust me, Markdown Editor is very easy to use and you will see it also when Pallavi will show you the demo. <coughs> GitHub. We already talked about so these are the key points you can collaborate for input so once you have completed your document in markdown editor you can push it to manage to the repository github is the repository and from there you can decide with whom you are you want to collaborate for input for review 
then you can manage overall your content overall the doc uh, doc folder you can have your own repository you can have your own repository it can be divided into multiple branches and then you have full access you can decide from your doc team which team member will have write access read access and in the same way for other teams also you can decide the access so when i'm saying you please remember whomsoever is a doc admin doc team admin and then of course versioning i don't need to tell github is known for versioning right so and then comes to the static side, side generator static site contains content as you see basically emerging uh, originating from files files can be from any uh, any uh, option like i said videos and images you save create and keep in a folder from that folder you just take the path and insert it in in your document you insert the path in your document remember you are not inserting the video or the image so technically we are talking about files and path so <clears throat> that way it is not dynamic site generated a static site generator you can just view the content you cannot go and edit the content there like in cms content wordpress drupal in case you are uh, you have used or even like in confluence and all when we use you cannot go and build the document and publish there only so the, you are building the document somewhere else and publishing it here as a result how does it benefit as it doesn't involve all the plugins and databases right on the website so the static site generator is very fast when you are pushing it from github it runs very fast when you are navigating on the website it runs very fast and it's fast it's like it runs in nanoseconds and since you are not able to modify anything on the site it is very secure unlike wordpress or other things it is considered very secure this is why it becomes very ideal for the documentation team for the documentation portal it is safe and you can modify it's completely in your control so this is where we have overall about the three parts static site generator github and markdown editor it's a combo of three and if you have more technical abilities probably you can have the site generated directly from your team only without probably needing the static site generator just github and the markdown editor is enough for you that's another way so um, doc as a code is not the uh, prepared in the only way that i am saying people use jekyll people don't use any si static site generator they create your they they create their own themes also they that also you can do depends completely on the technical abilities but at opsramp what we did we used markdown editor virtual source code we used github and then for the static site generator we used hugo how we did it now over to pallavi she will just provide you a demo pallavi over to you i'll stop sharing the screen yes uh, <clears throat> thank you thank you puneet so taking what uh, puneet just taught <clears throat> taught us further i'll show you a demo exactly how this uh, works um uh, let me share my screen <clears throat> okay, so uh, as Puneet mentioned, that uh, we need uh, uh, right now. I'm talking about specific tools over here: GitHub, Yogo, and uh, Visual Studio Code. As Puneet mentioned, you can use other tools as well for uh, Markdown Editor. You can use uh, other tools uh, for uh, your web website content. <clears throat> so this is uh, one uh, repository. So, GitHub, uh, GitHub is in. You have to install and set up a GitHub on your local machine as well. Then I have. Your voice is breaking, Pallavi. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh, you are able to see my screen. Yeah. It, and yes. my voice is fine now. Right. Okay, cool. Now we have. Uh, are you able to see the Visual Studio Code? Yes. Great. 
So this is the Visual Studio Code where we make all the changes. So I've already installed Visual, Visual Studio Code as a Markdown editor. And about you go. So next, how to, I'll just give you an overview of what uh, Yugo is. You need to install Yugo and installing Yugo is uh, very easy. The <clears throat> documentation, the uh, everything is uh, install Yugo is, the documentation of Yugo is very nice. You can quickly install Yugo. You just need to go to GitHub, get an extended version, but uh, I'm just giving you an um, overview of all how uh, Yugo works as a static uh, website. Now, when you install Yugo, you need a theme. You need the look and feel for your website content. So you can either create a theme of how you want your website to look. Otherwise, in Yugo also has uh, contributors who give you free themes. So you can just go to the complete list of Yugo themes. And can you see that you have different uh, categories over here where you can just download all these themes. Uh, for this demo, I have specifically uh, downloaded um, Yugo, uh, 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 Yugo book theme from documentation. You can create your blogs. You can use all these uh, themes over here. You simply have to go to documentation. Uh, I am choosing documentation as we are interested in this and click Yugo book over here. I've I've chosen this. So if you if you want to see, you can just go you can get a demo over here first, how that works, and simply say download. Okay, uh, rest we can. Uh, uh, if you want to learn Hugo, we can have that in some other sessions. But I'm just giving you an overview again. Okay, this is another documentation theme which is available free. And once this theme is there, you can of course, if you know some HTML and CSS, you can change all these colors. You can change the header and footer area and uh, you can change some of the TOCs, but overall the theme would be the same. OK, so <clears throat> let's see what happens. So when I am, what we do is we have to integrate GitHub Visual Studio Code. And. Uh, uh, and Yugo server, OK. Now. We need when you install GitHub on your uh, system, you also. <coughs> when you install GitHub, you also have some uh, uh, Git bash user interface through which you can give some uh, some in instructions to push content to GitHub or pull content from GitHub. You have also got a uh, the option to also do this from Visual Studio Code. Now, once you are in this in this uh, folder where you are developing the content, you can go and simply <clears throat> make some changes over here. So can you see that this uh, markdown editor, this is some form of what um, uh, Puneet mentioned just now that uh, markdown is much easier than HTML tags. You simply have to say one hash for introduction. If this is a second heading, you can simply say. Two hashes and say heading two. Right, and you can see that you have there's a preview over here where you can see, but you still cannot see how it will go and look on to my website, right? And before publishing it onto my website, I do need to know how it looks. Why Hugo is very nice over here is you can simply use some commands from Hugo. OK, so here you go. I'll once this is done, I'll you can see a dot over here which says that the file is not saved yet. Simple control S. OK, you can simply control S and you can simply. The, the white dot goes away or you can use save as a here. So all this what whatever changes you have made are simply saved in your local system but it's still not onto the GitHub or on your website after that. What we will do now is. <clears throat> we need to use some. First oh, before pushing it to GitHub, we need to see how this looks. So let's see if we can. Uh, 
OK, now why Hugo server? Can you see over here that uh, this is a local host is created over here? So what Hugo does is before you push it to GitHub or to the website, it creates a local server on your system. And if once you go to this local server, it will. <clears throat> so this is can you see in the address bar that it is a local host at 1313? So whatever is there on your system, on your themes. Now this is because I have chosen this theme. You can put in uh, as many colors and CSS and whatever you want if you're good at it or get it done from someone. But it is very easy over here. Now once this is done, we have to simply go back and see that uh, this uh, whatever we have made the changes has been reflected over there or not. Now I change this and say. Now for the simplicity of this uh, demo, I had already opened one file index.md over here and made some changes over here. So let's go and see if this is uh, done or not. So save this file. Once you save this file and the local server is already running, you can simply go and check it in the local server. <clears throat> OK, so we added heading two. we added some content over here and it's reflecting. Now, since I think that this is looking good, my con my uh, website will look exactly the same as how I can see it over here on the local server. I can simply go and push it to GitHub. For pushing it to GitHub, again, I can use this terminal only, which can be used for uh, GitHub as well. Otherwise, uh, we have Git bash also. You can uh, use git bash uh, to execute all the git commands, but uh, since this works easy for me, I'll do this over here only. Some commands which are very easy, and I'm sure that you will be very. Uh, it will be it, it's just a few. So I Say first I add, I want git to add this content. So I say git add dot. Then I say git commit so that I've made these changes and I'm committing to these changes. So some new changes. OK, this some new changes, whatever I'm writing is the comment. So if I made a simple change, like I've made some change to the code, I've made some feature change, or just added a line, I can just simply say it over here as a comment and that remind that next time for for any any time uh, uh, reference to it, it will be easy. So always this this is a bit best practice to always add a comment whenever you are making a change. And you can see that there are some changes. One file has changed. There are four insertions and let now let's push this content to GitHub. Now we have all the data that uh, the GitHub uh, we can uh, see it here in the GitHub. Content. Right, you can see it over your heading. Some content is added, so this is what we do now from here. Once this staging has been done, we merge it with the master branch. Once uh, after the review, OK, I forgot to tell you that here we can uh, add reviews, the peer review or the uh, technical reviews. And once it is done, we merge it with the master branch. This master branch is since I do not have a server to show you actually, but uh, 
this master branch is uh, is connected to a server where Yugo is installed, and then uh, you'll see an exact website of what I can uh, see it over here on my local server. So that ends my presentation.